Recently, in my DM, someone asked, because uh, I talk about exercise a lot, if I could define aerobic exercise in terms of percentage of heart rate max. And so what I think the question was, if I understood it right, is can I, def I define aerobic training as a percentage of heart rate max versus like anaerobic training or something like that? So if I got that right, what, this is what this video is for. If I didn't get that right, this video is going to just be random information. So heart rate max, let's just define that first. You got a heart. It can only beat so many times. So right now at rest, your heart is probably beating uh, normal, healthy, kind of standard heart rate is going to be between 50 and 70 beats per minute. When you exercise, you can jack that way up, but there's going to be a point at which your heart just can't beat. It can't contract. Those muscles can't contract, relax any faster. And so you're going to hit this maximum beats per minute, and that is your heart rate max. And so there's uh, objective ways to do it. One of the, like, the most objective way to do it is just, um, gas you, just work you up to your maximum and see where does their heart stop beating any faster. Because that's hard and because that's gross and you feel like you want to vomit and it's, it's really intense mental and physical work to do that. Instead of that, we can actually just do math like nerds. Uh, there's different ways that we can do this. The really simple way is 220 minus your age. There's a bunch of, there's not a bunch, but there's several different equations that you can do. They all have their pros and cons, the overestimating, underestimating based on different factors. But this works for the most part. And so 220 minus your age. Simple math, let's take a 20 year old, 220 minus 20. This person's max would be 200 beats per minute. And the really, really simple math is percentage of your heart rate max is we're just going to take 50% of 200, 60% of 200, 70% uh, of 200. So really, really simple, 50% of a 20 year old's heart rate max is probably around 100 beats per minute. What makes something aerobic? Without getting too nitty gritty into like exercise physiology and, and such, you've got different energy systems. You've got this like creatine phosphagen system, you've got a glycolytic system, and then you've got this oxidative phosphorylation or this aerobic system. And so the creatine and the glycolytic system are both anaerobic and the oxidative phosphorylative system is aerobic. And you're usually gonna hit that threshold around here. So around 80 to 85% of your heart rate max is called the lactate threshold. And so when you're working above this, more than likely you're anaerobic. And just as a little side rant, if you're really, really worried about having a specific, specific percent of heart rate max because you're trying to manipulate numbers up here, it's really silly because there's different things that happen over the course of a training program where if you're working up here, it's much more efficient to think about things. It's much more practical for your workout and your training to think about things in terms of energy systems like lactate threshold and tolerance and different um, time rest, work to rest intervals, rather than thinking about, I need to hit this heart rate um, just because your heart rate's gonna gradually increase over a training session anyway. That's a random side tangent. When we're thinking about aerobic versus anaerobic, generally anything above that lactate threshold is gonna be uh, anaerobic, meaning without oxygen, you're just pumping things. Your mitochondria literally can't tolerate any more of what's being fed into it, so it shuttles it away towards these anaerobic metabolic pathways. And so aerobic metabolism is generally going to be prescribed 65 to 75 percent of your heart rate max because as we, again, different fitness levels tolerate, we're starting to approach lactate threshold as we get up here, but we're comfortably away from it in this range. So anything here and even below is aerobic. I'm being aerobic right now, even though I'm not training. Let's bring this into the context of concussion and post-concussion. Why do we worry about percentages, percentage of heart rate max? Why did this question even come up? Because I have a predominantly concussion focus in my practice and on my account. What we're looking at in concussion is we're looking at, can we get you to certain percentages of your heart rate max? And if we can't, we're going to prescribe certain percentages of your heart rate max to get you back up to what we would expect as normal. And so let's erase this. What we normally see in concussion is symptoms will flare between 50 and 70% of heart rate max. We'll see concussion both acutely and chronically, even like years and years later, symptoms will flare between 50 and 70% of heart rate max. And so that's not, so SX is symptoms. So symptoms increase between 50 and 70%. That's not, we throw you on a bike and my legs feel heavy and I'm winded and I'm tired. No, this is 50 to 70% of your heart rate max. My headache is pounding. I feel nauseous. Uh, I feel dizzy. I feel foggy. The back of the gym looks fuzzy. 
that's not normal when you're exercising. Um, unless you're getting to these super physiologic, like more than 100% of your VO2 max intensities, you're probably not gonna feel nauseous from working out. Um, you should not feel nauseous from working out at these thresholds. And so that's what we're testing for. And if this happens in your concussion acute or your kind of chronic concussion assessment when we do throw you on the buffalo concussion treadmill test or bike test modified ymca bike protocol when we're doing a sub maximal test if you're flaring between here and here it's a huge indicator that this is going to be the biggest needle mover in your recovery because this is indicative of how you distribute blood in different uh, activities and intensities if you cannot distribute blood flow appropriately nothing else we do metabolically visually vestibularly cervically will work as well it still might move the needle but you're not going to feel fully recovered until you can distribute blood appropriately what do we want to see what we want to see, I'll do this in blue, what we want to see is that you can reach near this lactate threshold, near 80 to 85% of your heart rate max, symptom free. Um, no symptoms during the exercise or during the recovery. We want to see that you can get up to here, hold it for a while, recover, and that was it. All it felt was, wow, that was hard and I got winded, but there was no headache, there was no nausea, there was no foggy, there was no dizzy. So in the context of percentages of heart rate max and concussion and the whole conversation, your heart rate max is just the maximum times your heart will beat. Um, you're not gonna see someone's heart rate go to 400. Um, you should not see that be a serious medical emergency if they're going to like 400. There is a maximum their heart rate will beat. For most people, it's 220 minus their age. And then you can get percentages of that, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100%. Aerobic training is typically gonna be prescribed between 65 and 75%. You'll see that now really hyped up as like zone two training because you're below this lactate threshold, but you're definitely in aerobic metabolism. Uh, and then when we're looking at aero anaerobic metabolism, it's above your lactate threshold. It's usually gonna be above 85% of your heart rate max, especially if you're physically conditioned. In the concussion world, we see symptoms flare between 50 and 70%. That's both acute and chronic patients. And we don't like that. We want to give you prescribed sub-symptom aerobic exercise, so below wherever your symptoms flared. So if your symptoms flared here at 60%, we're going to prescribe you exercise at maybe 50 or 55% because your symptoms didn't flare here. And we want to build tolerance so that we can slowly creep you up, creep you up, creep you up until you can tolerate 80 to 85 percent of your heart rate max without symptoms and at that point we consider you clinically physiologically recovered at least from an autonomic perspective and what that tells us is if you can tolerate this both before and after that any symptoms you're having are probably likely related to one of the other buckets your visual system vestibular system cervical spine psychological metabolic hormonal uh, but we've checked off one of the biggest buckets and that's your ability to distribute blood flow uh, so that's probably a longer answer than what you were looking for but i thought it'd be helpful for for other folks in this can space. So if this did not make sense, feel free to ask questions in the comments. Uh, otherwise, uh, I hope this was helpful.